When this guy views it, he actually sees this beam of light traveling there and then traveling down. Now we can actually see that this distance obviously is greater than this distance. Right? So if the distance is greater, um, then essentially what we should have is, you know, the time should change. So let's say that this distance is 1 and 1, and then this distance is 2 and 2. Alright? So this total distance is 2, and let's just say that the, th the speed is um, 2 as well. Which means that the time it takes for this person inside is 1 second. This distance is 4. Now, this speed has to be still the same speed because light should always travel at the speed of light. So essentially, the speed should still be 2. And the only way I can get 2 over here is if my time is 2. So you can actually see that the time for the person inside is actually smaller than the time for the person outside. This guy's time is 2 and this guy's time is 1. We need that because the distance has changed, so to make the speeds the same, the time has to change. And this is in fact true. One of the consequences of Einstein's theory of relativity is that time for a moving observer will actually slow down. This concept is actually called time dilation. Um, the other things that can actually happen is length can contract. To make this equation still hold, the other thing that I could do was that instead of having, I could still have the time as the same, and somehow this distance instead of being 4, this distance is actually still 2 because the length is just contracted. And if I do that, I can still keep the time the same and I still get the same speeds. So the other thing you can have is um, length contraction. What happens is, as you're moving, the length of a moving object will contract in the direction of the motion. So if I'm going horizontally, I will, you know, sort of squish horizontally. Vertically, I will still remain exactly the same. Horizontally, I will squish. The third interesting consequence of Einstein's theory of relativity is something called mass dilation. And what that means is, the mass of a moving object actually increases. Now, this kind of contradicts what we have learned previously as well, you know. We thought mass to always remain, be the same, you know. Mass is the amount of matter that an, a substance has. And so, you know, that should not be changing, according to Newtonian physics. But one of the consequences of relativity is that mass itself changes. And the reason for that is this. Apart from saying that nothing can travel faster than, um, you know, the speed of light is a constant, the set Another thing that relativity states is that you cannot travel faster than the speed of light. So what that means is, supposing I'm traveling at, say, 0 0.999, the speed of light. Alright? And now I apply a force. Normally what will happen is, the formula is F equals MA. Normally what happens is, the force goes into the acceleration, and the acceleration then increases the velocity. Right? But what has actually happened over here is the fact that, you know, because I'm already approaching the speed of light, I cannot travel faster than the speed of light. So this force cannot go into the acceleration. I mean, a bit of it will definitely accelerate me, but not all of this force can go into the acceleration. So I, what actually happens is, the force goes into the mass. So a moving object will actually get heavier. Now, before, before Einstein came up with these concepts, we would consider, you know, mass to be absolute, time to be absolute, um, and even length to be absolute. But then, after Einstein's theory of relativity, all of these three concepts are actually now relative. So they can change depending on the observer. That's all for today. Thank you.